everyone. So today I would like to share to you about Hassan Maritim Avenue. Just like any other industry, seamen are at risk for suffering work-related work injuries anytime they are on the clock. The courts recognize this and are continually working to protect injured seamen through general maritime law. Maritime law gives workers who have been injured offshore or in the maritime industry the chance to claim necessary compensation for any suffering of medical complications. The following acts are foundational to maritime law. The first one is Jones Act. The second one is Death on the High Seas Act. The third one is Limitation of Liability Act. And the last one is Longshoremen and Harbor Workers Compensation Act. General maritime law is the basis for all injuries sustained by seamen. It is important to have a comprehensive understanding of the general law before delving into its subsequent act. History of Admiralty and Maritime Law Maritime law, also referred to as Admiralty law, is nearly as old as the shopping, shipping industry itself and governs most accidents that occur on navigable waters. The law's rules can be traced back to the unwritten customs of nautical behavior of the Egyptians and Greeks. However, the earliest formal codes were established around 900 BC on the Greek island of Rhodes. The original maritime laws and codes change from the ancient customs and rules of shipping. For example, the doctrine of general average, the concept that all sea cargo stakeholders, owner, shipper, etc., evenly share any damage or losses that may occur as a result of a voluntary sacrifice of part of the vessel of cargo to save the whole. Can we stress back to the early shipping customs of the Wadians? The concept of a separate legal authority regulating maritime issues was brought to the West by Julian of Aquitaine. Who learned of the concept when she accompanied her first husband, King Louis VII of France, to the Mediterranean on the Second Crusade? The term Admiralty Law came from the British Admiralty Court, who presided over maritime matters separately from England's common law court. As the U.S. The judicial system is based on the British system. Amended admiralty laws were gradually incorporated into our legal system soon after the Constitution was ratified. So, still based on industry standards and customs, maritime law is largely found in the U.S. Constitution. The Texas and International Convention, Federal Statutes, the General Maritime Law, and other judicial decisions, administrative regulation, and custom. When does maritime law apply? Perhaps most obviously, maritime law applies to events that occur on high seas. In other words, accidents that happen beyond the territorial waters of any country. Furthermore, maritime law applies to the territorial sea, which are waters within 12 miles of the shore. However, 
the last actually carefully the hidden stock to last clear further inland. Early in the United States history, maritime law did not apply to incidents that occurred within the body of the country and therefore excluded incidents involving the Great Lakes and non tidal inland waterways. However, throughout the 19th century, this exclusion eroded away. Maritime law is now applied to navigable waters. A waterway is deemed navigable by itself or by uniting, uniting with other waters. It can serve as a continued highway over which commerce is or may be carried on with other states or foreign countries. Consequently, if a body of water is completely landlocked within a single state, then it is not navigable for purposes of admiralty jurisdiction. However, a body of water doesn't need to flow between states to be deemed navigable. A body of water may be deemed navigable if it is a link in a chain of bodies of water that can be used to service interstate commerce. Ultimately, the task is that the commerce of one state must be capable of being carried into another state or foreign country. Once this task has been passed, it is likely that maritime law will be applicable even if it is a recreational vessel. Incidents that require Texas Maritime Accident Attorney. Also, maritime injury attorneys exist to help injured seamen or dock workers get the compensation they need to recover from serious injuries and afford long term medical costs that occurred offshore. That includes any accidents that occur, uh, occur, occur on navigable waters, rivers and ocean and in harbors or docks. One notable aspect of maritime accidents is that they are often devastating. Offshore oil rig explosions cause significant damages. Vessel collisions are frequently catastrophic and oil platforms can unfairly change the lives of workers. Maritime lawyers fight to help workers recover the compensation they deserve. Whether they are suffering after a major explosion or have injuries caused by unsafe working conditions. So I think that's all for me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you on my next video. Bye.